commandments at all, but we're poking a little fun here, having a little fun with the word commandment. There's no commands at all. They're more like road signs on the road of life. And it's nice to know that, hey, if we're on the road to LA, that there's a sign saying this is how far you have to go to get to LA. So let's start with a few. Judge for yourself whether this works for you. As one of my teachers says, go see for yourself. In my experience, here are some of the universal things I'm looking for in good health. How is our appetite, first of all? And that's a couple of things. Do we have hunger? Do we have thirst? And do we have appetite for intimacy or sex? Second, how well do we sleep? Can we sleep, fall asleep within five or 10 minutes of laying our head on the pillow? That's an ideal marker. Do we sleep through the night uninterruptedly? That's another ideal marker. And do we wake ready to go? Do we wake enthused? Do we wake wanting to start the day? That's a marker of health. How much sleep is fairly different for each of us. I've seen it where one woman, she slept four hours a night and she was fine. She did great with that. Her health markers showed it. Some people need 10 to 12 hours. There's no should there, but the question I ask every person is this. When you wake up, What's the first thing that goes through your thoughts? If it's, I wish I could go back to sleep, then you didn't get enough sleep, or your quality of your sleep wasn't good enough. The question should have the answer, I'm ready to go. I'm enthused. I'm excited. There's a day ahead of me. That's ideal sleep and rest. Or if we're taking a nap. We don't feel worse after a nap, we actually feel better. So, next would be energy. If we have dreams and goals, but we don't have the energy to make them manifest in the world, then that's a marker to me. We need to do some work on that marker of health, right? Do we have energy to accomplish the things we want to accomplish? Next to marker. Do we have natural appreciation and gratitude for the things around us? In other words, do I appreciate what I have right now? To me, the, the movies like The Secret or The Work of Abraham Hicks is the foundational basis of that is finding something to be grateful for because we create based on what we appreciate and what we have. If we, if we want more money and all we're throwing out there is that I want more money, then life's going to say, great, you're going to keep wanting more money versus I appreciate I have my health. I appreciate I'm sitting on a chair. I appreciate I have a house. And then we're building from abundance. We're building from an abundant place and we're more likely to attract that to ourselves. Go see for yourself. Can we find that place in us that has joy as another marker? In other words, in Sanskrit, in the old language of India, there's a word that points at this. It's the translated word means uncaused joy. Uncaused joy, in other words, it's just the joy of being alive. And do we see that in our lives? Just sitting here in front of a camera, can I find my joy? So do we have a desire to share versus a desire to steal from others? The desire to share is sort of like the two-handed outward movement. Most people share with this. What can I give and what can I get back for what I'm giving? This is a very nice way of giving. Sharing. The next one is clarity in thought and action. And the one word that you might walk away with in terms of understanding this is awake versus unconscious. You know when we say something when we're in a fight with our partner or a friend or a family member and then we realize, God, I wish I wouldn't have said that. That was, chances are we were unconscious in that moment. Think about when you're driving down the freeway and you take your eyes off the road for a second to change your CD or grab something and you're not paying attention to the road and you have one of those close calls, that's unconsciousness. We wanna be awake in our lives. We wanna be aware of what we're doing. We wanna choose our responses to life versus reacting. Reaction is unconscious instinct and it's okay too. But the higher level of health is where we're choosing a response to a situation. And that's clarity and thought and action. The last is fluidity. And when I say fluidity, I mean, can we let go of the moment we were just in and move on to the next one? So I was angry with my partner a few minutes ago, 
Can I skillfully process the anger, the trigger, and then fluidly move on to the next thing? Or am I stuck in a recycling pattern of, ah, I hate her, I hate what I said. And then we're not living in the present moment because we're not fluid. We're still stuck. We're tethered to what we did in the past. We can also be fluid about focusing on the future too much. Having anxiety about what might happen. Can we just let that go through our consciousness and let it go and move on? Fluidity is another important marker. And those are some of the practical examples of what we're looking for in health, in my practice and in my life. And I'm certainly hoping you can walk away with just a few pieces here today that will help you guide your path to higher health. This is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy, thanking you.